Welcome to RTV's Israel Daily. I'm Amita Rari and coming up in today's newscast. Three people killed overnight, including one Israeli during an anti-Semitic attack in a historic Jerba synagogue in Tunisia. Meantime, IDF operations shield and arrow continuing with tense calm noted in Israel. And she made it, Israel's Nakirel qualifying for the Eurovision Grand Finale. In Tunisia, three people were killed overnight, including one Israeli, during an apparent anti-Semitic attack in a historic Jerba synagogue. A guard carried out a shooting before being killed by others assigned to protect the site. ATV Steve Leibovich reports. The gunman who opened fire in the Tunisian synagogue was identified as a naval officer shot dead by other officers protecting the event on the island of Jerba. Hundreds of Jews had gathered at the synagogue for an annual pilgrimage on the Lagba Omer holiday. A guard was also killed in the shooting in the heavily secured El Griba synagogue. Nine people were reportedly wounded in the attack. The two worshippers killed were identified by Tunisian authorities as a Tunisian citizen aged 30 and a French national 42. According to police, the gunman was affiliated with the National Guard Naval Center. He first turned his service weapon on a colleague before making his way toward the synagogue. When he reached the area, he began shooting wildly. Other guards responded with gunfire, killing him. Local officials have not referred to the shooting as a terror attack. A statement says investigations are continuing in order to shed light on the motives, but they are investigating. At the time of the attack, the synagogue was hosting hundreds of Jews from France, Israel, and elsewhere, celebrating the Lagba Omer holiday, along with the tiny local Jewish community. El Griba Synagogue was established by Jews fleeing persecution some 2,500 years ago. The current building was constructed in the 19th century and is sometimes referred to as the oldest existing synagogue in Africa. Islamist terrorists have previously targeted the pilgrimage in Jerba, one of the most well-known attacks was in 2002 with a truck bombing by al-Qaeda terrorists which killed 21 Western tourists, prompting high security at the synagogue. Prime Minister Netanyahu and Defense Minister Gallant are both warning Israel's enemies and cautioning the Israeli public that Operation Shield and Arrow is not over and could continue for some time. Defense Minister Gallant says Operation Shield and Arrow is not over and warned Israel's enemies not to test the IDF. Gallant warned Israeli citizens to not grow complacent as the threat of rocket fire still looms. בעוצמתה של מדינת ישראל, קיר הברזל המגן על ישראל. Prime Minister Netanyahu warned that any escalation will be answered with a decisive response and the fighting could spread to other fronts. בימים הקרובים כולנו נידרש לאורך רוח ויכולת עמידה. לפני שבוע כשקיבלנו את ההחלטה ליזום את מבצע מגן וחץ, הנחיתי יחד עם שר הביטחון את צהל וגם את מערכת הביטחון להערך לכל תרחיש של הסלמה, וייתכן שביותר מזירה אחת. הערב אני אומר לאויבינו, כל הסלמה מצדכם תענה בתגובה מוחצת מצדנו. Netanyahu and Gallant and the heads of the IDF and Shin Bet, Netanyahu made clear that the current operation may continue for several days and be expanded to other fronts, including additional offensive actions both in Gaza and Judea and Samaria. Opposition and coalition lawmakers backing of the military operation launched yesterday in the Gaza Strip. Opposition leader and former Prime Minister Yair Lapid tweeted, This morning, terror groups in Gaza know that the intelligence community and the security forces are following their every move and every step, and the score will be settled. So we know the news is fast-paced and we want to let you know that LTV's new app is now available. So if you want to stay connected to the latest news from Israel, the Middle East and the Jewish world, download our new app now on all your devices. It's available in the App Store for both Android and iPhone. 
The past 24 hours have been marked by a tense calm as Israel is still bracing for a terrorist response to yesterday's airstrikes, killing three top Islamic Jihad leaders. Terrorist warnings calling for revenge as rockets have been fired this noontime to the south of Israel. LTV Steve Leibovich reports. Rockets have been fired toward Israel. Operation Shield and Arrow is ongoing with warnings that Israel's enemies not test the IDF. Hours after the strike on the terrorist leaders, an airstrike hit a terror cell armed with anti-tank missiles near Khan Yunus. At least two terrorists were killed in that attack. Israel stands prepared for retaliation from the Islamic Jihad with concerns that the larger and better armed Hamas terror group will also attempt rocket fire. Hamas hinted that it may join the expected response, saying that unity will be proven. Iran is reportedly exerting heavy pressure on Hamas to respond. In related security matters, two Palestinian gunmen were killed by Israeli forces during a clash south of Jenin. Troops remain on high alert, and the Israel Defense Force Home Front Command left in place restrictions on movement and gatherings for people living within 40 kilometers or 25 miles of Gaza, with officials estimating that a rocket barrage or other type of attack was only a matter of time. Hundreds of Israelis living in communities near the Gaza Strip began evacuating from their homes yesterday. It's part of an evacuation program coordinated and funded by the Defense Ministry, which was established as a lesson from previous military campaigns in Gaza. It enables every resident in communities adjacent to the Gaza border to evacuate to accommodations defined in advance by authorities with the help of the state. First to be evacuated are individuals with special needs, families in economic distress, and the elderly. And joining us now with more on the ongoing operation is Commander in the Reserves and Military Strategist Dr. Eyal Pinko. Eyal, Israeli leaders are making it clear that the operation is continuing. What do you think? I mean, maybe the next steps, or are we mainly waiting for a response from the terrorists? Yes, uh, th thank you very much. I, I do believe that uh, not as it appears in the, in the media, the situation is much, much uh, less uh, hard, if I will call it this way. Uh, Israel uh, managed to uh, eliminate a terror a group that meant to go and to have uh, an attack against Israel. This was the beginning of the story. So it was a prevention act uh, against these guys in order that will not go to uh, harm Israel. This is a JIP uh, act. Uh, what we call the Jihad Palestinian uh, uh, team. And th they acted not accordingly what Hamas wants. So nobody now really in the Gaza Strip wants to start a war or to do any kind of uh, you know, uh, campaign against Israel. It was a very uh, point uh, 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 incident or uh, operation against those guys. I, uh, if I uh, understand correctly the situation now, Hamas is trying to relax the, the, the things that nothing will, will uh, continue. Not like they publish, of course, in the media because they cannot show weakness uh, according to the culture. But if you see what Hamas is doing inside, the Gaza Strip is to keep everyone in silent mode that nobody will continue this operation. Nobody really wants to, to go on with that. So I do believe that the JIP will, will act in some kind of uh, revenge act maybe some rockets, maybe trying to do some terror act against Israelis inside the Israeli borders, but not more than that. Nobody wants to escalate the situation. But they already started, I mean, and you're saying they're not willing to, but still, is Islamic Jihad unable to respond effectively, or are they actually waiting for possible support from, from the Hamas? Uh, uh, they, they are not, uh, they are two organ, Hamas and JIP are two organizations that are not working together. They are against each other. Uh, and Hamas wants to stop it. Hamas don't, doesn't want to, uh, that the JIP will react. In any case, they will react. I'm, I'm sure they will react. It's a, you see, when you see the history of uh, their behavior, they will react as a, as a revenge act, but it will be, I, I do believe it will be moderate and not a large scale. Because once again, Hamas is trying to eliminate them and to, to stop them of... Uh, um, to, to do some you know, bad action uh, or that will escalate the situation and enforce Israel to, to bomb again in the Gaza Strip and to go to another operation. So I do believe this is a very uh, point 
issue. It's, I think the media put it in a very large scale, much more than it is. We will see a revenge. I don't know if it will be today, tomorrow, in the, or in the, in the near future. But uh, I, I, do, I do not believe that uh, this uh, situation will escalate into a war. Yeah, Iran is apparently pressuring Hamas to get involved and take revenge uh, on Israel. What's holding them back? I mean, is it just a matter of time? What's Iran's deal uh, in this operation this time? Iran, in some very funny or mysterious way, is backing up those two organizations. And uh, like it's a divide and conquer uh, mode of Iran with those two guys. So Iran is supplying weapons, uh, money and training for those two organizations. But, you know, they are controlling both of them in case one will take over the Gaza Strip on the other. Uh, Iran uh, is totally operating the situation, is totally behind everything. But uh, I don't think that Iran wants now to escalate the situation. Iran is preparing for a larger scale of war, maybe against Israel with the aid of the Yemen Houthis in the south, with the aid of Hezbollah in the north, and other militia that are spreading all over in Syria and Iraq. This is not the time for I Iran to, uh, to act. And I, I do believe that Iran is uh, also holding uh, Hamas not to operate and just to calm the things down uh, in, in, you know, from the back, on the backstage, if I will call this way. Can this operation be used in a way that can effectively restore um, Israeli deterrence? I think we lost it a long time ago, the deterrence, really. Uh, you know, but the civilians in the Gaza Strip uh, really don't want Israel to bomb their houses uh, as, a, as, a, you know, as an act of uh, deterrence. I don't believe that uh, we have a real deterrence uh, against, uh, unless we speak about those civilians. Uh, so once again, to now to revenge and all, uh, I don't, it would not bring the deterrence. I think that the killing of those uh, guys was, was a very nice deterrence, but you know, it's very point. And in the Middle East, everything is from day to day. Definitely from day to day. Dr. Eyal Pinko, I'm praying for uh, some calm. Thank you so much for joining us today. today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.